In this episode, we'll look at language translation using recurrent neural networks. The reason we're looking at this is because the work on RNNs for language translation sparked two key innovations that power advanced language models like OpenAI's ChatGPT and Google's Gemini. On one side, we have the encoder-decoder architecture, and on the other side, we have the attention mechanism. In this episode specifically, we'll focus on the encoder-decoder architecture. Translating a sentence in a different language is a sequence-to-sequence -sequence task. The core challenge is that words in one language don't always have a direct equivalent in another. Moreover, word order and grammar structures can vary dramatically. This makes aligning the input and output sequences a very complex task. A 2015 paper named Sequence-to-Sequence -sequence Learning with Neural Networks proposed a general RNN architecture to tackle exactly this alignment challenge. One of the main authors was Ilya Satskovia, who is one of the core scientists behind ChatGPT. The proposed architecture is called a delayed sequence-to-sequence -sequence model with two distinct components. The first component is an RNN that processes the input sentence and converts it into a fixed size hidden representation. Think of it as capturing the sentence meaning. We then feed this hidden representation into a second RNN, whose job is to produce the translated sentence in the target language. Another way of saying this is that the first part of the model encodes the input sentence into a hidden representation while the second part decodes the hidden representation into the translated sentence. Now that we understand the general encoder-decoder architecture, let's look at this in more detail by building a model to translate from English into Italiano. As we did for our previous language model, we need to split the input into tokens and create a vocabulary. Only this time we will have two distinct ones, for the input language and for the target language. These vocabularies will likely also have a different number of tokens. Both the encoder and decoder RNNs will take in a sequence of tokens and project them into embeddings. When it comes to the encoder, we discard the outputs at each individual step and only consider the last hidden state, which we take and feed directly into the decoder. The decoder works in the same way as a regular language model, predicting the Italian translation one word at a time. As for a basic language model, the decoder typically has a linear layer at the end, which outputs the logits, which give us the probability distribution across the Italian vocabulary of the next word. The only difference with a regular language model is that we use a special SOS, start of sentence token, as the seed for the first step. We continue generating words until the model outputs another special token called EOS, end of sentence. To train this model, we need to create a dataset with sentence pairs, an input sentence in English and the target sentence in Italian. We pass the English sentences through the encoder, collect the final hidden state and pass that to the decoder. We then input the start of sentence token as the first item in the decoder sequence, and we get the logits for the first token prediction. But what should we now input as the second step of the decoder? In theory, we should input the model's prediction exactly as we would do during the forward pass at inference time. But then we would have no guarantee that the decoded output will be the same length as the target output, or even have any word level correspondence with it to compute the loss. Instead, a simple solution is to input the next token in the target Italian translation from the training set. This is called teacher forcing. This can speed up training and help the model learn more effectively, as it is 
always guided by the correct sequence. However, it can also make the model less robust to aerosol deviations when used in the real world, since it always expects the correct previous output. The issue is known as exposure bias. After completing the full forward pass, we can determine the loss by comparing the decoder's output logits at each step with the target sentence. It's important to note that the loss calculation extends all the way back to the encoder. An alternative strategy to compute the loss is to randomly select words from the target output rather than evaluating the entire output sequence. Typically, this method involves selecting just one word at random for loss computation. This approach acts as a form of regularization, potentially preventing the model from overfitting to the training data. By focusing on random individual words, the model is encouraged to generalize better. So this is the basic translation model. It works all right, but there are a couple of optimizations that we can do that are going to make the model perform better. In their paper, Satskovi et al. empirically observed that reversing the input sequence improves the model's performance. This likely happens because it brings the beginning of the sentence closer to the start of the translation process, making it easier for the model to establish a better correlation. Another optimization is using a bi-directional RNN for the encoder. In this setup, the model processes the input sentence in both the original and reverse order. This results in two sets of hidden states for each part of the sequence, giving the model a fuller understanding of the sequence context from both directions, which can lead to more accurate translations. Okay, now that we have trained the model, there is a final question to address. At each step, the decoder generates a probability distribution across the vocabulary for the next token to put in the translated sentence. But how do we pick that token from that probability distribution? You'll remember that in a previous episode on language modeling, we discussed the greedy approach for selecting the next word in a sequence. This method picks the most probable next word each time based on the model's predictions. However, when it comes to translating sentences, ideally we want to output the most probable sequence, which is not the same as always selecting the most probable token at each step. A token that has a high probability at one step might lead the model down an overall less optimal path later on. The sure way to find the absolutely best sequence is to do an exhaustive search by looking at all combinations. Now, this means exploring the entire space of possibilities by considering every possible next token at every step. However, this method is highly impractical for most real-world applications, and the reason is the exponential growth of possibilities with each additional token. It becomes computationally infeasible to evaluate every possible sequence, especially for longer sentences. Moreover, most of these sentences are highly improbable and irrelevant, making this approach inefficient. Instead, we can use the beam search algorithm to look at multiple possibilities at each step, maintaining only a fixed number of the most probable sequences so far, discarding the others. The number of sequences we keep at each step is called the beam, which we extend one token at a time, only keeping the most promising ones until we reach an end of sequence token. By considering a wider range of possibilities, beam search can often find better translations than the greedy method. Subscribe to the channel to get notified of new videos and visit LLMChronicles.com where we have a list of all of the videos so far and you can also see a plan of the future videos. That's all for this video, see you next time.